Hey, good morning, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Over the weekend, I spoke at an outdoor event and the wind was blowing like crazy. I must have inhaled 60 pounds of dust and man, my allergies are, woo, they're off the charts. So my voice sounds a little rough, but uh, we'll see if we can get through this thing. Let's go. Luke from Wheeling, West Virginia. Dear George, what do you think is heavier? What do you think is heavier? Giganotosaurus or Spinosaurus? Me and my colleagues agree that bulkier theropods such as Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus were heavier due to the lighter bones and figure of Spinosaurus that it could be used to aid the dino in agility since its sail would have otherwise proved to work against it when turning or running. Both, however, were very successful and awesome creatures. Luke, yeah, Tyrannosaurus rex and Giganotosaurus, uh, in my opinion, were probably heavier uh, comparative to body size. Uh, that is, if you found a Spinosaurus, a Giganotosaurus, and a T-Rex all the same body length, then yeah, I do believe uh, uh, Giganotosaurus and T-Rex were built a little bit heavier. Spinosaurus is a little more gracile, but I hate to use that word when you're dealing with such a monstrous dinosaur, but uh, it does appear that, uh, that their body weight would have, would have exceeded that of a same size or same length dinosaur, uh, Spinosaurus. As for agility, um, I personally believe all of these dinosaurs were much more agile than we give them credit for. Over and over again, I see these reports of people saying this dinosaur was slow. No, it was fast. No, it was slow. In my opinion, it clearly was fast enough and agile enough. They were all fast enough and agile enough to be able to be successful. And that meant it doesn't matter how fast or agile they were. All that mattered is they were good enough to survive by catching prey that lived within their environment and therefore... Um, agility and speed become secondary, uh, the question is whether or not you're fast enough or agile enough to catch your prey. And they were. All right, Jenny from Boston, Massachusetts. Could an adult T-Rex jump? Jenny, this is interesting. Um, yeah, they certainly had the ability to jump, but not the way we would think. I don't see Tyrannosaurus Rex jumping around much because all of that weight coming back down literally would come back down on or about the what we would consider to be their ankle. And that is a huge amount of weight to do that. You don't see big animals jumping, like elephants don't jump, um, giraffes, rhinoceros, hippopotamus, they don't jump because there's no reason to really. Um, was he capable of doing it? Yeah, I believe he was, if he needed to. Perhaps in the heat of battle, he may have had to perhaps jump to land on the side of prey, but I don't see him really doing that very often. That would be the last thing I think he would want to do simply because of his size. Could he and should he are two different things, and I think he could, but I don't think it would be a good idea to do it that often. All right, Zach, the Steel City Tiger from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, my buddy Zach. He says, Dear George, good to see you back. It's been a long time. Let's see if I can ask a question. Can dinosaurs in the same species be a different color and color pattern, not male and female differences? It's going to help me with an, att with an attraction story. Uh, first, let's answer that. Yes, I absolutely agree that all dinosaurs would have had variations in colors within species. Look at cows, for instance. Unless you have a purebred cow, there are a variety of color patterns. Look at a lion, look at a cheetah. Every single one of those animals has variations within their families. So yes, I do think dinosaurs would have been the same way. I think that if Tyrannosaurus rex was striped like a tiger, then chances are each Tyrannosaurus would be different and probably would be recognizable by other members of the family. So yes, I do think there would be a color pattern difference and I also think there would also be color pattern differences between the sexes, as, as I know you are aware. Let's see, the second question would be, and who would win in a fight between the American lion and a Siberian tiger? Yes, the past versus present. Your friend, um, what's my name again? Oh yeah, Zach. <laughs> Zach, love hearing from you. Um, wow, you're taking the American lion and the Siberian tiger and figuring out who would win. Yikes, man, this is a good one. Siberian tiger, I would say, probably would hold an advantage over the American lion. And that advantage would be brain power. 
since the Siberian tiger is the end result of millions of years of progression, and the American lion really was kind of a newcomer on the scene, in my opinion, that would mean that the Siberian tiger has the benefit of all those years of passed down intellect. So I would think his advantage would be he would be a lot smarter animal than the American lion. Now, I don't want to make it sound like the American lion is out there walking into trees. <laughs> I know he's dumb. But I do believe that the Siberian tiger would be more advanced because of a longer time span, time span, time span on Earth. So I think uh, the Siberian would have an advantage. But boy, that would be a nasty fight. Yikes. All right. Liborio from Detroit, Michigan. Hello, Mr. George. Well, for starters, I would like to ask you, a Brachiosaurus and a Patasaurus, who would win? Wow. I don't know, Liborio, if these animals would have ever fought. Now, it's possible because things like uh, if food was in short supply, if water was in short supply, certainly herbivores will fight with each other to take advantage of whatever's there. So, man, would this ever be a fight? A patasaurus would have an advantage in that he would probably be um, able to fight from distance, meaning he could utilize his tail and stand back a little bit and not get into an actual confrontation. Use that whip. How do you like that sound effect, everybody? Pretty good, huh? Um, I think he would use that whip to be able to keep Brachiosaurus at bay, but... Man, Brachiosaurus is a big, big animal. He probably would have been like a tank. He probably would have just walked right up to him, crushed him. So I would think that if these two herbivores ever decided to fight, I don't imagine why they would, they wouldn't probably fight to the death. But if they did, I would have to say Brachiosaurus is probably the one that would win simply because of its sheer body weight and mass. He writes, P.S. I'm a very, very big fan. Uh, Laborio, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. And I'm glad to have you as a friend. And it's nice to... Uh, have you write to me. All right, Ryan from New York City, New York. What would the world be like if dinosaurs never became extinct? Wow, I love this one, Ryan. This is good. Um, wow, what would it be like? Well, certainly it would be, um, I would think that the raptorial dinosaurs, the dromaeosaurids, the raptors, Deinonychus, Utah raptor, Velociraptor, that bunch. I think they ultimately would be the top predators. I think we would see a decline of the giants. I don't think we would see as many gigantic predators like Tyrannosaurus rex and those guys. Uh, what would the world be like? Probably an incredibly dangerous place. I would think that uh, duckbills, because they appeared to be very successful, I think they would be the most common dinosaurs on earth. Um, I think we would see uh, real divergence in species. I think, especially islands now, I think uh, places like Australia would have some of the oddest, I mean, look at the mammals they've got, very oddballs there. But I think that we would see a real divergence of oddities. I think we would get um, completely different kinds of dinosaurs. I think there'd be a lot more nocturnal dinosaurs. I think small guys would have developed larger eyes, perhaps developed things like uh, radar, to be able to live and hunt at night. I think during the day, the gigantic ones would be out. And I think in the mornings and in the evenings, you'd have a lot of variety coming out. Who's to say what it would be? It would be a lot of fun to see it. But I do believe that gigantism, because it comes with such a price, I don't think we would see as many gigantic dinosaurs anymore. I think we would see a much more diversity in what I would consider to be medium dinosaurs. Dinosaurs between 10 and maybe 15 to 20 feet. All right, Wesley from Concord, North Carolina. Is it possible that when the meteor crash that supposedly wiped out the dinosaurs, it carried a disease that wiped them out instead of the impact itself, seeing as it didn't kill everything, things like sea life, mammals, etc. cetera? Wesley, um, very interesting question. Um, I, I've said this before. I read an article once where somebody suggested that a disease may have been more responsible for the death of dinosaurs than we give it credit for. The big question becomes, how does a disease traverse the entire planet uh, to ultimately affect every dinosaur? Well, it certainly could traverse the planet if the Earth was thrown into an uproar by something like an, an asteroid or a comet. One of the things that I would think we need to consider, though, is associated with that asteroid when it hit, 
It literally created an atomic explosion that created an inferno. Meaning that if it had a disease, the chances might be more likely that that disease would have burnt up on impact or would have been um, turned into cinders during the actual explosion. So I don't know if I necessarily think that would be the right answer. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean everything thrown into the air was cooked. Is it possible that there were disease that were laid dormant in the ground that could have been thrown up into the dust? Yeah, that's possible. But this person that, that proposed the idea that, uh, and that disease killed them also proposed the idea that it may have been carried by things like birds or pterosaurs. Now, those are animals that have the ability to travel great distances and carry the disease within them and spread the disease. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's, a, it's a great idea. I love the fact that we're not limited and everybody doesn't agree that an asteroid killed the dinosaurs. I've seen things like uh, some of the other different concepts. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gamma ray bursts that perhaps they may have had an impact or it may have had an impact. It's so confusing because so many things didn't die. It just leads to the question of what the heck did it if not everything died? And perhaps disease may have been one of the culprits or may have been the culprit. All right, you guys, listen, it's always great to hear from you. Please send me more questions. I'm shooting one tomorrow, but we're going outside because we're going to go take a look at... Um, uh, a foot of a dinosaur. Somebody asked a question about a foot of a dinosaur. I'm going to shoot that one tomorrow. So we're going out and going to give you a little, little, little sneak preview of some of the pieces that are going to be used for my traveling exhibit. So stay tuned for that one. That will come up in another day or two from the day I post this one. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. It's a great way to figure out where I'm going to be. And Facebook is a great way to stay in touch. Visit my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Uh, you can find links to my Twitter and Facebook accounts there and join them. I'd love to have you as one of my friends. For everybody out there, take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. For all you young people, make sure and practice your reading because reading is incredibly important. And for everybody, use those good manners. Now I'm going to go blow my nose because I don't have a dust bunny. I have a dust grizzly uh, forming in my head. So I'm going to go see if I can sneeze out and blow out a dust grizzly. Uh, maybe I'll film it, let you guys see what it looks like. And maybe I won't. I'll see you later.